Okie dokie artichokey. What is going on beautiful people? Happy Friday. Welcome back to another Friday Live. Hopefully this is going to be smooth. Uh, so I apologize for the last week. We had some technical difficulties. We were trying to uh, figure it out. We're on, a, we're on a new coast. So we are on the East Coast. Typically we're on the West Coast. And um, so we were just, uh, we're figuring out how to do uh, some of these things in a new spot, okay? So um, as you're tuning in, I'd love to know a few things. We have a visitor, her name is Chanel. Um, and so uh, I'd love to know a few things uh, as you're tuning in. I'd love to know what your first name is. I'd love to know where you're tuning in from and let me know something really, really good that's going on in your life right now. And we can hang out for a little bit, okay? So if you don't know who I am, my name is Connor. If you don't know, uh, I'm from Pittsburgh and something really good that's going on in my life right now is that I have been hanging out in Miami for the past few uh, couple weeks, not few weeks, but past couple weeks. So um, that's something really good that's going on in my life because I don't really take a whole lot of trips or go anywhere else besides home because I'm a homebody, okay? So uh, yeah, let me know uh, your first name. I'd love to know your first name. I'd love to know where you're tuning in from and something really good that's going on in your life right now, okay? And we'll hang out. We'll do some questions and... I'll let you guys have a fantastic weekend, okay? So we got Miss Danica in the house. Danica, we are down, what, 27 pounds in six months? Yeah? So um, we love that. We got Philippines in the house, Frank from Hong Kong, originally U.S. That's pretty cool. Hong Kong, how long have you been in Hong Kong for, Frank? That's pretty sick. Um, yep, yep. We got Tiffany from Georgia. My sister has been sober for 10 years now, a whole decade. Let's go. Amen to that. Praise God for that, Tiffany. What part of Georgia are you from? Um, we got Les from New Mexico. Is that how you say it? Fernandez? Leslie? That's cool. What's up? What, uh, <laughs> what part of New Mexico are you from, Les? Um, Danny goes from the desert, coming from the desert, crushing the workouts at F45, new low. Let's go. 147, something like that, right? Um, something like that, Danny goes. So we got Steph from Riverside, California. What's going on, Steph? We were just chatting. God has been really speaking to me lately, which has been nice. I love to hear that, Steph. And so your workouts should be updated by this weekend, okay? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, all right, so morning in, Ho in Hong Kong, that's right. You're on Saturday, you're already on the weekend, is that right, um, Frank? So, six years in Hong Kong, okay, cool. Chanel is uh, smelling something. So, we got Miss Angela in the house. What is going on, Angela? You're from Minnesota, right? We got Brazelton, Georgia, okay? Another Georgia in the house. Send healing vibes in New Jersey. I'm so sick. All right. All right. We got you. We got you. We were praying for you. Healing vibes going to New Jersey. Okay. We got Tanik Tanuka Tanika from NYC. I'm going for a food tour tomorrow. <laughs> Oops. That sounds fun. Well, uh, eat all your cheat meals like all in uh, all in the food tour. Okay. Do you want to get down? Do you want to go down? Do you go down? There you go. Okay. All right. So um, Chanel is up the party. So <laughs> um, you good? Okay. Uh, we got India in the house. We've got Lily from England, just passed her nursing degree. Let's go, Lily, out here killing it. We got Korea in the house. Danica finished all her workouts, 13 hours ahead. Okay, from Eastern time. Um, greetings from Hollywood. Okay, back in my stomping grounds. I'll see you back there in a minute, <laughs> in a little bit. Angela from Minnesota. Harry from London, currently up the road near you in Fort Lauderdale, bruv. Okay, I see you, Harry. I'll come, uh, I'll, <laughs> let's get a lift in or something, okay? Um, thought the pump was a blanket. Um, yeah, Chanel had to go inside. Uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Cool. Um, yeah, so we're going to hang out for a little bit. Angela's watching Seven Puppies. I would do anything for my family. All right, I love that. Michaela from Georgia. We've got like a million uh, Georgia Georgians in the house today, I feel like. So, yeah. Cool. All right, so, um, yeah, let's get, uh, let's get into this. Jonathan from Tampa, what is going on? Um, yeah, that was Chanel. So, uh, yeah. All right. So let's get into this. We got uh, a few questions that we're going to walk through. Okay. And so let me, um, let me actually do this real quick and we'll get started. Okay. I want to make sure that I pin this thing real quick. If I can find it. There we go. Cool. All right. So let me know uh, what your first name is. Let me know where you're tuning from. Let me know something really good that's going on in your life right now. And we're going to get started. Okay. And so let me just pin this comment really quickly and we'll get going okay so https colon dash dash connor trot dot health um i think that's it cool 
and I want to pin this. Pin Kong, sick. All right, let's get it. Kelly Washington just welcome baby number two. Let's go, Kelly. I love that. I love that. Baby number two in the house. Cool. All right, so um, yeah, we're gonna walk through some questions. We're gonna hang out for a little bit, and uh, you're gonna have to let me know like some of your responses because that's how we run things here. Um, it's not just me who answers these questions. I want to hear from you guys and we'll get going okay so as we always do we got some random questions we got some faith questions we got some questions on love some questions on life and then we've also got some questions on fitness as well okay chanel may come back i don't know do you want to come back you want to come over here no okay um <laughs> okay angela cool all right so uh the first random ones are i'm gonna need your guys help to answer some of these okay because um they're random questions and they really don't have any other purpose besides giving some funny uh, answers, okay? So the first question is this, question number one. Let me know what your favorite hobby is. What is your favorite hobby? Let me know like in the comments right now because um, <laughs> um, I'll give you guys my answer as you guys are like answering this, but um, I feel like I've had like a couple people ask me this lately and I don't know about you guys, but I don't really have a whole lot of hobbies, you know? Like if you were to think, like if a hobby is something that you do in your free time for fun, if you're not doing like work or you're not working out, like that, like what is your hobby outside of like those things? I gotta be honest with you, in my free time, like my hobbies is, my hobby is basically like, relaxing on the couch and watching youtube basically like that is what i do for like as a hobby because um i feel like if i did anything else it would just exhaust me and like tire me out and i would not be able to do everything i'm supposed to be doing so it sounds kind of a lame and like a lame answer but like let me know like what you guys do for fun um and if you guys have any hobbies because i need to find like a new hobby or something okay danica does traveling jonathan jim we can count Jim as a hobby because if we're counting Jim as a hobby, then that is my main hobby. Okay. So we got dance. I like that, Les. Um, bake. Okay. That's fun. Jim. I feel like Jim can be a hobby. Longboarding, thrifting. Thrifting's fun. Baking. I feel like baking is a cool hobby. Reading, painting, and traveling to new places. Okay. That's fun. I would like to... I don't know. Is there like a frequency as far as how frequent you need to do something for it to be considered a hobby? Or is this like, are there any rules to making things hobbies? Like, I don't really know. Um, I guess I could throw reading in there. Readings like, I like to do, I like to read and everything too. So maybe, maybe, maybe that could be in there too. If working out is a hot, if it is considered a hobby, then like I'll throw reading in there too. Okay. Um, I used to have hobbies and then I needed three jobs to make a little more wage. I feel that. Uh, Cool. Netflix. Yeah, I'm definitely on like the YouTube and Netflix as far as like my hobbies go. Con sounds kind of lame, but yeah, that's probably what I'd probably say. Um, yeah, working out, golf, finding me again. I like that, Harry. I like to cook, spending time with God. That's not, I like that hobby. Um, South Africa, my hobby is reading books. Cool. I like that. Sweet. All right. Um, I don't think of working out as a hobby. Yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know. It feels like it's kind of like work. You know what I mean? It's like, I need to work to make money, um, and I also need to, like, work out so I can, like, feel good about myself, you know what I mean? So I don't really know if that's a hobby, but, uh, yeah, um, we are definitely overthinking the definition of the hobby, yes, okay, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like this is, like, exhausted, this answer, um, it's just doing nothing, I like that, cool, all right, so, um, yeah, so if I'm considering uh, reading as a hobby, then this will be a good segue to uh, this next question, okay? So question number two is, let me know if you guys like are book nerds, if you guys read, if you've ever read a book in your entire life, which I hope to God you have. Um, if not, we're gonna have to meet after class because um, we're gonna have to get you started to at least read a one book in your whole life, okay? So <laughs> ideally, we're gonna get that to two books, but um, you're gonna have to message me and let me know if you haven't read a book or you don't have a favorite book because I got some good recommendations that I'm gonna give to you guys, okay? So let me know, um, question number two, let me know what your favorite book is in the comments right now, please. So let me know what your favorite book is. This is question number two. So um, 
I, aside from the Bible, I would say I've got, I've probably got like five books, not aside from the Bible, but, um, Purpose Driven Life is the best book. I'm reading that right now. I like that. What are the odds of that? Um, Bible, in that case, I've never read a book. In that case, I've never read a book. Okay. We're after meet after class. Okay. Um, the beauty and things. Uh, I was just going to ask what you'd recommend. I don't pick up books for fun. Sorry. All right. All right. I feel identical. I'm reading the women of the Bible speak and love it so far. Oh, I'm reading the women of the Bible speak. I like that. Impossible to name one favorite book. I know it's, it's pretty hard, isn't it? I'm currently reading the secret. That's a good book. That's on my list to read the secret man search for meaning is also on my, also on my list. Victor Franco, Victor Frankel. Is that right? Man search for meaning. Is that right? Kelly Byrne. Um, don't like reading, but can't find a good book I'm interested in. I just finished Purpose Driven Life. All right. All right, Sarah, said Jessica. I see you. I'm uh, I'm on day four of a Purpose Driven Life, I think. Day four or day five? I feel like maybe day five. Um, yeah, Victor Frankl, Man Search for Meaning. Cool. All right, so these are going to be my probably top four favorite books. It's probably hard to, like, narrow down, like, one favorite book. But um, I would say these are probably my top four, and they're all kind of, like, sort of different in their own way but i would say my my top four anything c.s lewis okay c.s lewis is a is a solid solid writer that's for sure um i i i like uh i like a lot of his stuff i haven't like read a whole lot of his stuff but i know i know like he's got a lot of good quotes as far as like his beliefs and stuff like that and how he came to christianity so i definitely like c.s lewis um so yeah so besides the point these are my top four that i like um, so my favorites, my all time favorite used to be the power of now, like when I first got into reading. Um, so the power of now by Eckhart Tolle was like probably one of my top ones that like I read early on that really, I, I just really, really enjoyed and really liked. Um, the second one is probably breaking the habit of being yourself by Joe Dispenza. That's a really good one. Number three is 12 rules for life by Jordan Peterson. And number four is probably 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. So those are like my four. Power of Now, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, 12 Rules for Life, and 48 Laws of Power are like some of my top favorites um, that I've really liked. Aside from the Bible. Like the Bible's probably like top all time. You know what I mean? So um, yeah. So those are probably like my top five. But uh, if you haven't read any books, I definitely read um I definitely like would recommend maybe starting with one of those, okay? <laughs> and uh, I think you'd be really, really good, even if you wanted to even start with the Bible. Like, I feel like you'd, you'd be great, okay? Bradley, sitting on a flight from Miami, watching it live. All right, that's kind of cool. That's kind of meta. <laughs> I like that. Um, all right, so, uh, all right, next one is, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Question number three. If you could have any superpower, let me know what it would be. Because... Um, I want to get to know you guys a little bit more, okay? Trying to meet more, more though. Let me know, like, what would, like, your, like, all-time, like, favorite superpower be? Because if I had to pick one, I'd probably say either to time travel, if that's considered a superpower. If it's something that, like, a human being, like, doesn't already have, like, that's probably something that I'd want to do. Um, teleportation is, like, my second one. I like that, the beauty and things. Um, so it would either be, if I could have only, if I could have a superpower, like, any superpower, it would probably be either to time travel or be, I said be places instantly, which I guess is teleportation, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, those are probably my top two. So between those, I guess like time travel would be probably the, the top one, but if I had to pick something that like was physically based on science, like maybe, I feel like teleportation might be more possible, feasible. Maybe that has to do with time travel. Who knows? We're getting trippy here. So yeah. All right. Let me see. Like, what would your what would your superpower be if you could pick one? Teleportation, hands down. Hey, Amen. I'm right there with you. Lacey Cook, telekinesis for sure. Telekinesis. I would move everything with my mind. Read people's minds. I was thinking about that too, but I feel like there's some things that I don't know if I would want to know about people. Like, if I read their minds, you know what I mean? Teleportation, so I can snap my fingers and be in another country on vacation. I like that. Um, time travel for sure okay ability to to become invisible and solve crimes okay i like that shape shifting invisibility flight and turning into cool stuff all in one okay teleport <clears throat> time travel i don't have the patience to sit in traffic yeah that's what i'm about to 
I would be a lie detector. <laughs> Being invisible, LOL. Cool. All right. So, uh, yeah. All right. So, yeah. All right. Last one. And um, we'll get into like the faith questions. Okay. So question number four is, so I don't know if you guys knew this, but um, Easter is coming up. So Easter is actually in March this year. So it's actually the very last day of March, I think is right march 31st so um let me know um this is more of just like a life update i guess rather than like asking like you guys this but um yeah question number four is are you excited for easter i know it's a few months away i guess it's one month away uh in a week i guess but um it's such a special weekend so yes i am actually super excited for uh, easter coming up because um typically ever since i've moved uh to la my mom it's sort of like a tradition now that I'm like living there uh, for the past few years. My mom like sort of comes and visit me, visits me on Easter. So my mom is going to be coming into town. We're going to be doing some fun things together. And uh, yeah, so I'm very excited for, for Easter coming up. And we're going to have mama in town. I feel like the last time she was actually on the live was Easter. So definitely really excited for that. Um, and we're going to get her back on. That was another question like a while ago um, was when is my mom coming back on these lives? So we're definitely going to get her back on um, for Easter coming up in uh, probably four or five weeks. OK, probably five weeks from now, uh, I'm going to have a visitor on here and her name is going to be my mom. OK, so, yeah, definitely excited for Easter coming up. There she is. There's my mom. What's going on, mom? <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing you over Easter. I'm looking forward to seeing you too, mom. So, yes, I'm excited for Easter coming up and it's in march don't forget okay mark your calendars so yeah all right so let's get into some uh some faith questions and that is going to be the end of our random question so hopefully we didn't lose anyone but um but yeah so here comes uh some faith questions okay so these are kind of like actually serious these are like deeper and i feel like i get some good questions and we get some good responses on some of these questions okay so question number five is this so this question is have you thought about hosting a prayer and fasting day once a week so i would say that i've um i took i did a little uh so i did a little worship night actually for the first time um last week Actually, no, that was this week. No, that was last week. That was last week. Last Monday I did it. So um, I've never actually... So I personally have never done... Um, like when it comes to my walk and my journey and my faith and my walk with God, I... Um, everyone's got their own like pace, you know what I mean? So I... Um, the worship night was cool. It was very cool. It was, it was cool. It was like uh, had a bunch of friends... Um, in one place we were kind of like singing like worship songs and it was it was a lot of fun um but like i was saying so everyone's got their own like pace when it comes to their own kind of like walk and um for me um i haven't actually done yet i think this is something that i probably would would get into more this year but um I haven't like done any kind of like Bible studies or small groups or anything like that. I've been to them before, like I know what they're like, but um, I certainly like haven't ever like hosted one <laughs> before, but um, I feel like that's maybe like the next step for me is to like maybe join a small group or maybe join, um, maybe join like a Bible study or things like that. And then maybe I could like figure out how to like maybe host one or maybe we could host one here and stuff and talk about, talk about what, uh, what I'm reading in, um, in scripture and stuff lately. Like maybe that'd be something cool if you guys would be down for that. Um, but yeah, I've never, um, I've certainly thought about like, uh, joining like a Bible study in like a small group or a men's group and stuff like that at my church. But as far as hosting one, I feel like I'd probably have more impact uh using like some kind of like social media or something like on this or something like that okay so um yeah and um definitely all about fasting like i think um intermittent fasting for me has been something that's like really really helped me as far as um i mean there's like about a bunch of different benefits from it but i really like to do it um i feel like i always get like a really 
clear mind and I have a lot of clarity if I'm ever like trying to think about something or make decisions about something or like something big is coming up in my life um I would definitely recommend maybe like taking a day of like prayer and fasting to like really like clear your mind and get a really good um you know kind of take some time to to not have like your your stomach digesting food like every 24 hours and things like that i feel like it's pretty powerful if you've never done it before okay um i've been involved in a small group i'm not sure it's a beautiful thing men's or women's group is also so supportive oh i actually i went to another small group um i went to a small group this past tuesday so i've been to ones before that but um yeah, I wanted to mention that too, but um, it's so supportive. I apologize. I'm Kristen from Massachusetts. Nice to meet you. What is going on, Kristen? Welcome. I'm. Uh, we're glad to have you here. Self care day. Um, so yeah, that's definitely been something that's been on my heart lately, as far as far as like really consistently going to one. Um, and maybe we can like do something here on like IG and stuff like that. Um, since we do like our lives every Friday, maybe we can start something up like uh, like this or something like that too. So yeah. All right, so um, question number six is, would you be open to church hop to another church that will grow your spiritual faith? So I would say totally. I'm definitely down for that. Um, whenever I moved, um, I pretty much went to the same church when I was growing up as like as a Catholic. Um, and what is going on, Tanya? Um, just because like that's my family, like pretty much went to like all my life. So I never really uh, thought about going to like a different church, right? Until I like moved for the first time away from like my home, um, hometown. So for me, it was like, I went to one church and that was like my church that I was going to go to. And that's what I want. I've been going to for like ever since I started going again, um, about a couple years ago. So I haven't, I'm not, I didn't really like test out a bunch of different places, but if I didn't like the first one I went to, like the first service, then I definitely would consider, um, like trying to find a place that actually like, I feel like I connected with and felt like I found like a lot of good community at. So, um, for sure. So yeah, I think if I ever like, you know, when I move again in my life, like, I think that's definitely something that I would, I think I can find a lot of peace in knowing that like if I ever move to a new city, like if you're ever someone, if you're someone that's thinking about like maybe moving to a new city, um, and something like for me that I was kind of concerned about was, um, like really finding like friends and like a community and things like that, which is actually a question I wanted to get to in the life section, but, um, was like how to like find new friends as a guy, like 25 years old. Um, I wanted to kind of hop into that, but basically like that was something that i was concerned with when i was like moving to a new city for the first time didn't know anyone um but i think doing it on here is cool i usually work overnight to the post office so now that i know you come on at this time on friday i'll be here with you let's go let's go thank you for doing this out of the kindness of your heart of course you got it um so yeah i think like i think what's actually really comforting is knowing that uh you know faith is like a big part of your life then you already have like a really supportive community uh, like of a group of people that like can't wait to for you to like join their community you know what i mean so um if you like move anywhere like that you don't know anyone or you're moving for work or for whatever reason like all you really have to do is get plugged into like a really good um if you go to church like that's probably what i would do if i like whatever to like move somewhere again is i'd probably like try and get plugged in at church like meet some people there meet some people at like my gym and things like that um but i'd definitely be up for um church hopping like if i would ever like move again but like as far as like where i'm at right now in la like i really like the church i go to um which uh is called mosaic so yeah i don't want this to get like too dark but yeah that is what i would say on that um, all right. Next question is, have you ever had times where you reflected on and challenged your own faith? So I think this is kind of like a newer thing for me. Um, I'm always open to check on new churches. How, how do you make friends there? I feel like mine's too big to really meet people. Yeah. Um, I would say like I used to church hop and it's exhausting. Yeah. How to meet friends at church? Like, um, I guess like the way that the way that I would do it and have done it is um so you can like it's kind of it's kind of weird like you grow up and you go you come out of college and you're like how do you even make friends again you know um and so 
the way that like I like I've did it was um, sometimes like you can go to church like early and um, you could serve at church like you could join like small groups and things like that and meet a lot of people and be a little bit more intimate with things and have like discussions on like what the message was at church and things like that or like uh, pray together and give praise reports and things like that. There's a bunch of other things you could do like with like small groups and stuff, which is like I totally would recommend. I haven't really, I've I've been to them and I know what that's like, so I'd probably recommend that. But um, if you're just going to like Sundays and everything like that, and you're just trying to meet people, then like when you're going by yourself, then maybe go a little bit earlier and like meet some people and stuff like that. And all you need is like one friend to kind of go with you to make it not feel like you're so solo and awkward and alone. Um, even if you don't, it, it, you know, maybe try to get that first one friend and just keep going back with them and meet some more people kind of like through that so you don't feel so alone, um, you know. So maybe just like going a little bit earlier, staying a little bit later after church and things like that, okay? So, yeah. All right, so um, this was uh, where I reflected and challenged on my own faith, if, or my own faith, if I ever had times like where I did that. Um, I do always fly solo. Personally, from my own experience in church, I was a part of a large congregation. I still am able to, even though I moved two years ago, I just went to the welcome room they had where you can meet. Yeah, I'd probably say like, that's probably like, the easiest way, you know? So, yeah. But um, as far as this question, as far as like times where I've like reflected on and challenged my own faith, um, I would say like the only thing that really stands out to me is like, when I kind of came back to my faith and kind of came back to church when I kind of just really now I'm more I go to like a non-denominational Christian church and that's kind of like my uh, the way that I express my faith and like do my faith and everything like that so um, I would think like the only times where like I really reflected on it and um, it like challenged it was like really like rediscovering my own walk that was like a very personal thing for me um and being really really passionate about that um and uh and things like that so that's what like was important for me was to really like okay like if i'm gonna like step back into my faith like i really want to make it all on my own doing like it was it had to be like i'm gonna make this first step as far as um as far as like getting back into my faith like starting to read my bible again it wasn't going to be like someone was like forcing me to read it like that was going to be like the last thing that i wanted the last thing that i needed um but it was sort of like i'm going to rediscover a lot of this again for like the first time for me and um figure this out uh sort of like on my own at least like initially but then like maybe have some like really good mentors like mentors um and people that a little bit that were a little bit more ahead of me a little bit more like spiritually mature than me like sort of help guide me um but not really like hold my hand because like i really wanted it to be like a very 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 like personal thing and it always like your own walk is like very very personal it's like it has nothing to do with anyone else but um at least like for me to like step back into it like it had to be like a really really like personal like thing for me as far as um stepping back into it so yeah cool all right so um yeah and then just this last one i wanted to answer was like sort of like transitioning into like the love question um that i have here so i just have one actually on that um but this last one on faith is as a christian what are key red and green flags we should be aware of when searching for companionship so what is going on angie love you did catch the live i'm glad you're here um so what are some key green let me know like what you guys think what are some key um red and green flags that like you should be aware of when searching for companionship um i guess in the, in the lens of like faith if that makes any sense so um what i would say is like i think for me if i'm searching for like a lifetime partner then um in the eyes of like looking through it um as far as like faith-based and like finding someone that can really like support me and um be like a companion to me like when it comes to like my faith and their faith um something that i really um, look for and looked for was like i wanted and i've said this before but like i needed someone to be like on the same level as me when it came to like how spiritually um mature that i was and like working towards becoming more spiritually mature evenly yoked yeah amen um and like i didn't want someone that was like just 
I didn't really want someone that I had to like teach a lot to. Like I didn't want someone that I could like equally carry uh, or not have to sort of carry and like walk them through and, and teach them things. Um, I think that it, I think it's very important. Yeah, like you said, like to be um, equally yoked and to sort of be on the same level. Like, so for me, it was something that, that I was seeking and, and, and searching out was like someone who was on the same level as me, if not like further along than me, because like I didn't necessarily expect them to sort of carry me, um, carry me and like really like pull me in my own walk. It was something that I was always gonna like continue growing um, with like my own like spiritual maturity and like walk with God but I wanted someone that was at least on the same level as me and was um, seeking like running after God like sort of at the same pace that I was right I didn't necessarily want someone that was like really really way far behind me or like um, or anything like that so I'd really just say that's probably like the biggest thing that like I would maybe suggest if I have anything if you're looking for someone who is like the same level as you when it comes to your faith and you're looking for companionship like that um, I think that's pretty important okay so that is the uh, that does it for for the faith questions I look for like-minded people someone who can be on your level yes equally yoked is key learn from each other and grow together no time to catch up there you go I like that, Tanya. I like that, Tanya. I appreciate the, the two cents. So, yeah, it's getting a little dark. I feel like, like we did this like great at sunset. It's kind of cool, though. Um, so, yeah, let's get into I only have one question on love. I only got one question on love. And uh, then we'll talk some life and we'll talk some fitness, okay? So, uh, the one question on love is this. So, unfortunately... It says this, I was heartbroken last year and cheated on. Do you have any words of advice for me? Um, your voice is getting deeper. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's something in the uh, in the air here uh, where I'm staring at. I don't know. I think it's also like this like area that I'm in. It's kind of like <laughs> the, uh, I feel like the sound like it's like drawn out. I'm in this, you know, it's kind of different, but, um, but yeah. So um, this question was, I was heartbroken last year and cheated on. Do you have any words of advice for me? I do. I do have some, some words of advice for you. So um, what I would say is, um, is to, number one, um, like really, um, let's see. I feel like there's a lot to say on that, but. I would say probably the thing that if I were you and like the things that like I did personally was that I took two years to really just like do me and be, I wasn't concerned about like filling a void. I wasn't concerned about like finding myself through someone else. Like I wasn't concerned about like any of that. Um, I was concerned about like really growing myself and being like a whole new different version of me for like the next person that I was going to be with. So the thing that I would probably say is like, don't take it personally. It's, it's probably not about you anyway. Um, and I think it probably can be like the biggest blessing in your life that you don't really maybe realize right now, but I promise you in, uh, in like six months, in a year, in two years, it's probably going to be the biggest blessing you've ever had in your life in disguise. Like you don't know this yet, but like God's got a plan for you. I promise you, um, he's got like a timeline for you. That's like perfect. Uh, don't dwell on your mistakes or his and focus on your sweetie and no can suck beating yourself up. Amen. Amen, Tanya. But um, yeah, like you're going to be so much better because uh, because of it. And like don't um, just like don't take it personally. And you got like so much for it, like to look forward to. Like if you just like pour all of uh, all of those. Um, let me make sure this is not on dark mode because we have no light. Cool. Um because if you just like focus on pouring a lot of that energy back into yourself and you're not like out here feeling um, feeling uh, like like lost you're not out here feeling like super like maybe take your time a little bit to like maybe like heal and things like that but um, I would really stress like I, like 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 trying to transform transition from like this like victim mindset into like a victor mindset um, is something that I always kind of like reminded myself if like something like that happened or like 
someone close to me got hurt like that. So um, yeah, don't be afraid to spend time alone and do things alone. You find comfort breaking through uncomfortable situations. Absolutely a blessing, amen, 100%. I love that, what you said, the beauty and things. I love that. Yeah, I think it's like a superpower. If you can kind of like, if you're good on your own and you're good with being by yourself and you don't need whatever, like you can you can find a lot of um, wholeness and completeness and like um, satisfaction and like doing a lot of things on your own and growing on yourself and working on yourself. Um, I think there's like a lot of power to that, okay? So we're coming into night mode now. So uh, <laughs> yeah, this is kind of fun. Excuse me. So yeah, that's just what I would say to that. So um I've just got some few more questions on life and fitness and I'll let you guys go. Um, but I promise you we're going to make this at least an hour. So we might go to an hour. I think we're at like 40 minutes right now. So yeah. All right. So now let's get into some life questions. These are kind of just like general, like one off kind of like things about life and stuff like that. So definitely feel free to give me your two cents so I can hear what you guys have to say. I'd love to see what you guys have to say about this um, and things like that. Okay. So this is kind of going back to what I mentioned. My name's Emily, by the way, since my at is a little long. Cool. What is going on, Emily? I, I appreciate you letting me know. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So this is the first question on life. I think this is question number 10. So um, I mentioned this earlier, but this question is, how do I make friends at 25? I used to have the boys. I used to have the boys from football and rugby in college, but now as a professional, how do I make new boys? How do we make new boys, um, new friends, new girls, new girlfriends, if we're... Uh, we're starting our like our our young adulthood life or you know maybe coming out of college we're starting as a young professional how did you guys make friends like how did you guys meet people um let me know like what worked for you or if you've had the same friends your whole life like let me know too okay because um i would say that's probably it's um i would say like everyone probably goes through a period like that where they're maybe transitioning from like different friend groups or different people that are in their life um it's definitely something that like everyone has probably experienced and and knows what it's like and maybe has done like different things but um i'd love to know like what you guys maybe did so something that like really worked for me was um i actually met a lot of my friends when i moved for the first time and started a new job i met a lot of my friends um actually at work and at the gym and at church so those are like the three places that i found a lot of like-minded people um that like wanted the same things in my life i wasn't going out to like do things that i was gonna i I wasn't i wasn't going to places to meet people that didn't have a very like-minded um like approach and mindset like as me right so i wasn't going to like i wasn't going out partying i wasn't going to the clubs i wasn't going to the bars to like try and meet people for the first time because well for one i don't like doing that anyway uh for two um I wasn't going to meet people that like really were after the same things that I wanted to do. Um, so like, that's not where I wanted to go, but like, I would probably just find some comfort in knowing that like, if you just show up to the places and you're like that, that you are really passionate about and you're interested in, then like, you're going to find people that are on the same kind of path as you, um, and things like that. Okay. So that's probably just what I would say. And, um, and yeah, so yeah, that's just what I would say about that one and cool so let's see here work church random person the grocery store lol just be yourself (laughs) yeah yeah i guess like or like yeah like serving your church or volunteering or something like that i feel like you could find a lot of people like wherever you want to go you know um i'm almost so sorry i just had surgery and broke my tongue around the foot so i'm sorry about that is not very good um cool all right so yeah i don't know is this like a vibe like are we liking the darkness i don't know I wish I could, like, I had, like, a, I wish I had, like, a, what do you call it? Like, a spotlight thing. Because right now, this is just, like, the glow from my computer. But I guess it works because I guess you guys can still see me and you can still uh, hear me, (laughs) which is good. So, yeah. All right. So, next question is, do you guys think you've had a fair opportunity professionally and personally? Do you guys feel like you've had a fair shot um, when it comes to ring light? I don't know like why I couldn't think of that, but yeah, I do not have a ring light right now. So yeah, but uh, do you guys feel like you guys have had a fair shot when it comes to like professional, um, like when it comes to your career and your work, 
do you think you've had a fair shot when it came, comes to things that are like more personal, maybe with, um, with like relationships or like friendships or things like that? Let me know because um, I'll just give you my two cents on it and uh, I'd love to see like what you guys think about it. But I have always felt like I've had a fair shot um, when it comes to, okay, yeah, like skin color. I feel that, Tanya. I feel that. I feel like your like skin color, like race and ethnicity, I, I guess those are sort of similar, but um, I, like a lot of things can be different when it comes to like having a fair shot. And I know like maybe it's a privilege to like some of the things that I, I feel like I've had a fair shot from, but um, I also feel like just like, it's sort of like a, if you're thinking about like a mindset thing, I almost feel like if you, um, if you feel as though you have like consistently and persistently are not getting a fair shot, um, then I kind of feel like that's sort of like a victim, a victim mindset. Um, and there's like, there's realities, don't get me wrong, but of like, of where you live at and your race and and, and ethnicity and things like that. But, um, I feel like if anyone who looks exactly like you has lived exactly like where, where you live or has come from and they've like they've changed their, their life and they've really changed um, like what they've done in their life, then like I promise you like you can do that too. So um, I kind of feel like if if maybe you've experienced like not having a fair shot for like a little bit in your life, but you've changed that around and now you've grown from it and you, you feel like now you you've changed that, but it's been on your terms and things like that. And you've changed the fact that now like you, um, you're getting more of a fair shot Then, like, I feel like that's really like the change from having this like victim mindset into changing it more into having like a victor mindset. And you're like, you're not thinking like, Oh, every, like the world's out to get me. Like everything's out to get me. Um, and things like that, like everyone's out to get me to like changing that to, to being like, Oh, um, I'm going to, I'm going to change the course of like where my life's going to go. And like, I feel like I'm going to create like my first shot. I'm going to create it on my terms and things like that. Okay. So I would say I personally, I feel like I, I have been given a first shot, but like, I've also changed things to, to see, to know that like I can change that and create my shot. Um, I don't need it to be made for me, if that makes sense. So yeah. All right. So, um, I'm just going to answer some quick ones on fitness and I'll let you guys go. Okay. So yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. So, uh, some of these questions on fitness, let's see, do you still do shows, competitions and different, li- uh, powerlifting meets and marathons, or do you just do coaching now? So what I do, I I'm taking a little break this year. I'm just focusing on coaching. I'm focusing on work. Um, we're not doing any like we're not doing any competitions. We're not doing any like races. We're not doing any like powerlifting meets or anything like that. Um, <laughs> I'm, all, I'm taking a body pump class and it's killing me. That's pretty sweet. Okay. I love that. Um, that sounds cool. Are, are we losing weight doing it? Like, is it working mom? Let me know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, but right now, like we're just, uh, the past couple of years, we've done like a bunch of different things and things like that. But eventually I probably will compete again. I'll probably do another men's physique show maybe next year, like maybe next summer. But I feel like this year we need to put on some size. We need to put on some muscle because we are not where we need to be (laughs) to like compete and do well, you know? So yeah, Sarah said, Jessica, that is kind of a hard name to say, but okay. I'm about it. I'm counting my macros and it's hard to stay consistent. Yeah. I know I'm telling you like I've tracked macros forever and it's changed my life. So just stick with it. You'll get used to it. You'll get used to using my fitness pal. You'll get used to using like whatever macros app that you use. Um, but I promise you like, it's going to give you a really good relationship with food. You're going to know how like portion sizes, you're going to know, um, calories. You'll know like how much macros of each macro, like protein, fat, carbs are in everything basically. And you'll really know how to ship like, have a healthy kind of relationship with eating and dieting and food. Like I promise you. So definitely keep it up. Okay. Um, let's see here. I think the last one I want to answer is, um, 
cheat meals. So, so let me know like what you guys do on cheat meals if you do cheat meals because I want to let you guys go and it's getting like really dark out. So <laughs> I don't want you guys to like not be able to see me anymore. So um, yeah, so this question is do you do cheat meals? If so, what is it? What, yeah, what is it? What it is? Um, so I personally just do macros like we were talking about a little bit earlier. So I don't necessarily like always cheat every day but i also know that i also typically i'll eat the same thing every day but um i'll also just try and like eat within my macros so like if i want to have pizza or ice cream like you said angela then i'll fit it into my macros but it's not something i'm going to do like every single day because um i i feel like it just wouldn't make me feel good right and like at least i want to hit my protein goals and obviously eating like cheat meals all the time like would not get me to my to my protein <laughs> basically every day. So I do do cheat meals, but it's not like an everyday thing. Maybe it's like a once or twice a week thing. Um, and typically my cheat meals, I guess, are typically pizza, ice cream, donuts, and candy. Like I eat like pretty much everything you could possibly think of, okay? Um, I do cheat day, haha, but once a week, but less than carbs for me. Okay, I feel that. All right, so um, yeah. That is uh, just one I want to walk through. I don't know how many questions we got through. I feel like maybe 15, but um, I tend to like bitter food when I cheat. I like trying interesting food. So I feel that. Okay. So yeah, that's all I got. We're getting back into a rhythm of these uh, these lives. I'm trying to make these a little bit better for you. Um, I'm trying to come on live a little bit more often and um, hang out with you guys. You can get to know me more. I feel like these are good ways for us to just like meet people, hang out, get to know each other a little bit more. And it's like, we can create a little bit of a community here. Okay. So uh, maybe we can find like some friends here or something like that. Okay. So yeah, that's all I got guys. I love you always. Thanks for spending some time with me on your Friday. As we always do, I host this party every single Friday and, um, I hope you guys come back next week and we can hang out for a little bit again, uh, next week. Okay. So have a safe Friday night. Have a safe weekend. Take care of yourself. Keep drinking your water. Keep looking good. And I'll see you guys here uh, next Friday, okay? I love you guys. Peace.